Welcome back. This is going to be a quick video about the tangent scale, the T scale. Um, again, I have a video introducing the S, the T, and the log scales and how to do direct reading on them and the basic slide rule videos. Uh, you should review that video. Um, now, uh, I have the slide rule here set up for direct reading. Um, here is the T scale. Um, I've aligned the indices of the T scale with the D scale. So if I set 25 degrees on the T scale here, then what is on the D scale is tangent of 25 degrees. Um, if tangent is in the range 0 0.1 to 1. Uh, so here we see 4, 6, 7. Okay, now Here's a graph of the tangent function. We see if uh, the angle is between 5.7 and 45. The tangent is between, this, this is approximate, uh, 5.7. Uh, but if we're approximately between 5.7 and 45 degrees, then the tangent is between 0 and 1. The problem is as we go between 45 degrees and 90 degrees, tangent um, explodes here. Um, but if we want the next order of magnitude from 1 to 10, what we do is we use reciprocals of cotangents uh, that are appearing on the T scale. Um, so for example, if you want tangent of 75 degrees, first you set up the T for finding the cotangent. Now the cotangents are the tangents of the complements and they're marked in, uh, in red on the T scale. So I find 75 in red on the T scale there. Um, and then what's reading on the D scale is the cotangent of 75 degrees, but on this slide rule, what's reading on the DI scale is the tangent of 75 degrees. Um, remember, this is reading in reverse, but here's 3, 5, 6, 7, uh, 0.3, 3.73. So if you read like that, on this type of slide rule, uh, from cotangent marks here down to a DI scale, um, you read tangents between 45 and 90. Um, now, some slide rules, especially European slide rules um, and later American slide rules, instead of having this set up with a T and a DI, they have two tangent ranges, sometimes called T1 and T2. Some slide rules are marked tangent less than 45, tangent greater than 45. Um, if you have those scales, you probably don't have this DI scale. Um, and those scales both read directly against D, one for range uh, 0 0.1 to 1 and another one for range 1 to 10. Okay, and you get more on either end if you have slight scale extensions. Um, now, the reason for having the T-scale, even on the basic slide rules, is not really for just direct computation of tangent, because uh, on a basic slide rule you could do that by dividing uh, signs, for example. Um, the real reason uh, is for computing angles, so doing the operation in reverse. So say I have this triangle, uh, and I want to find angle theta here. It's a right triangle, so uh, tangent of theta is 0 0.6. Um, so theta should be arc tangent of 0 0.6. So if I find um, 0 0.6 on the D scale, um, then on the tangent scale, it reads the arc tangent. So there's 31 degrees. Um, on the other hand, if I have a triangle like this, where the uh, tangent is going to be greater than 1, uh, then on this type of slide rule I use the DI scale and the red marks on the T scale. So here on the DI scale down here I'm going to set this 1.5 and then I'm going to read the result on the tangent scale but I'm going to make sure that I read the red marks. So 55, 56.4 reading the red mark on the T scale. Um, if you have a T2 scale you would be setting this 1.5 on the D scale and on the T2 scale, um, finding the angle. Okay, as a final application of the tangent scale, let's uh, try to find the hypotenuse length of this right triangle where I know the other two sides. Um, this is a standard scenario where if you had a calculator or a computer these days, you'd use the Pythagorean theorem probably, right? But it turns out on the slide rule, the Pythagorean theorem is not a very convenient calculation. Um, so actually, this is done using the T scale. Um, imagine also that this applies to a vector where you know the two components, you want to know the length of the vector. Uh, the first thing is to divide. So I'm going to take 29 and divide by 48. Um, 
the easiest thing to do is uh, to uh, find the angle which is less than 45 degrees, which is going to correspond to dividing uh, the smaller number by the larger number. Um, so let's see, let's t find 29 on D. Now in this slide rule, there's no C scale on this side. Uh, so to do the division, I'm going to flip to the other side using the two scales in tandem. Um, so you see the other side is still set to 2.9. I'm going to divide by 4.8 by aligning the 4.8 of the C scale. Then coming out to the index. That divided by 4.8. Now I'm going to go back to my trig side. Okay, so I've computed 29 over 48. Result is on the D scale. I'm aligning the slide rule so I can read the tangent scale. Uh, sorry, trying to get it uh, aligned well. Okay, so reading the tangent scale, okay, I'm now doing step two. Reading the tangent scale, I'm attempting to find the angle, and I'm reading that now it looks like about 32.2, but let's go with the 31.1 that I read before. Uh, okay, so that's essentially found that angle, and I actually have to read that number off of the slide rule um, as 31.1. So here's a slide rule algorithm where I have to take that number and then do something with it. What I'm going to do with it is use the law of signs. Uh, this is a trick from the law of signs video. Uh, so I'm going to set 31.1 on the S scale and... 29 on the D scale to use the law of sines. So the S scale is here. There's 31.1 about on the S scale. Or sorry, to do that I should set the 29 first. Then I should find 31.1 on S. Okay. Now that I've done that, um, I'm using the law of sine, so I go out to 90 degrees, which is at the index of the S scale, to find the length of the side across from that 90 degree angle, and then I read the result there, 56 on the D scale. Okay, So there I found the hypotenuse length of that triangle, actually avoiding the Pythagorean theorem. Of course, uh, the Pythagorean theorem is somehow in the background in basically all of trigonometry. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and good luck with your slide roll.